you have taught me something I never knew. I really? mean, I never learned. What so is that? I'm very thankful to you. All these, you know, I have seen the paintings. I heard about their names, but I really never read about them. Right. So even for my this old brain, it says, wow. I know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Brain, that's so really nice. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody. Everyone is slowly signing in. <clears throat> so that's the idea of this particular class is to just give you a little sprinkling of uh, the work that people have done, the artists have done over so many years, right? I wanted to start off with primitive art, um, the oldest form of art, you know, where they would just get it. And then some people just, you know, in the rocks of Bimbetka in India, they had just scraped off like little rocks, you know? So um, those were like 700,000 years old. But the art where there are these sketches with uh, people on maybe a horse or a donkey, I don't know. Those were 7,000 years old. And then there are, you know, then I moved on to like the more modern, um, you know, art from the, <clears throat> from Vinci's time onwards. And we've only done what, uh, almost like nine artists. And uh, uh, every session we took one artist and we looked at their work, but then their lives are just amazing. And I cannot cover everything they did on in just like 40 to 45 minutes. Um, but I just wanted to uh, give you all just a, just like a sprinkling of information. Okay, you can get it from a, you can go on and Google them and you'll get it. But I just wanted to give it to you in little snippets, little stories and then talk about their life and their their thinking as well as their quotes so that it inspires the younger generation so it's, it's just like i took up how i used to teach master work uh, with my children when they were in first and second grade now they are almost grad one of them is almost graduating from college the other one is in med school she's graduated i don't know four years ago so, you know, so what I want you all to know is that I put in a lot of effort into these little classes so that it is available out there for everyone. And, uh, you know, even little people like as young as eight years of age can understand it. And other people uh, who are older, like Prem and Kusum and uh, Saroj, they can also, you know, they, some of them like Prem has seen these paintings, you know, has have heard of them. But then when I, when I tell them in the class, they are appreciating it, that it is what Prem just said, which I really truly appreciate. That was the idea of the class. Anyway, so it was a little bit of art appreciation, a little bit of showing you techniques on you know, how to shade, how to paint, how to use all of your color pencils and so forth. And then you just go on and do it. Okay, so uh, let's move on. I am going to um, share my screen. Uh, before I share my screen, let me also tell you, today I had a discovery. So in one of these big packets, one of them is empty in the back, right? This is a canvas. But in the back of this canvas, Guess what all I, uh, I discovered? I got a inspiration manual. There's the inspiration manual. And it shows you how to use the paint brushes. Okay. And then it has acrylic basics, how to use acrylic paints. Then it has watercolor basics, how to use watercolor. And then it has um, pastel techniques. This is amazing. I wish I had opened this canvas up before. I didn't realize it. But, and here's pencil layering techniques. It's a very good resource, so use that. And then here it shows you how to uh, uh, set up your stand, 
okay? And in this, look at this, a color mixing guide. And inside you have color theory, see? And so this is how to mix colors and so forth. This is a very nice resource. I think you should have it. And they added so many mixed media pages. See these? So this is phenomenal. And it's, this is a gift that keeps on giving. I love this kit. Now look at this, another sketch pad. So all of this came behind one of the canvases, okay? So make sure you check that out. All right, my kitchen counter is a mess because I am trying to, I had this idea of framing my really big paintings and uh, it was just very expensive. So I had a brainwave. And so I'm trying to make that back there. See, all the little wood pieces, I painted them and I will see if I can make a frame with it. Anyway, so today I'm going to share um, about my, uh, uh, about artists that I really like, okay? That are still living. Can you see it now? Mm -hmm. living yes. artists living artists this is my 10th class and we are going to discuss three artists yayoi kusama gerhard richter and dale chihuli yayoi kusama i really enjoyed because um she was very different you know she has she's right now in a mental institution since the uh, 1977 she checked herself there because she has some problems and she has to use medication to control. But look at, she's 91 years old and she still paints. She has a regular schedule and, I, and you'll see that, you know, she follows that schedule. She has people helping her out, but she still paints and she's 91. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her in a bit. And Gerhard Richter is another painter I really enjoy. And, um, you know, I want to talk about his style a little bit later, but he's eight, 88 years of age and his paintings sell, I don't know, his, his, his paintings are so expensive. And Dale Chihuly, he's a glass artist. And Chihuly is a glass artist. And I thought he was a glass artist until recently when I saw that he's also a, an artist. He paints all these things that he makes out of glass and he's 78 years old, okay? So these three artists we're gonna talk about, so we have a jam-packed session. Let's see, you can learn about Yayo Kusama on this little link that I put for you, but I just want you to know that she was born on March 22nd in Japan, 1929 was the year she was born. And she began painting as a child and she hallucinated about dots, like little dots, you'll see that very quickly in her paintings. And you know, she used to paint because her mother did not like her to paint. So she would, she would paint in like in hiding. She would paint really, really quickly and then hide her paintings. I, I don't know why her mother didn't like her to paint, but she just uh, didn't allow her to paint. But she was very passionate. And then she studied art, uh, the Japanese style, but then moved to New York City in 1959, okay? She's famous for her infinity net paintings and uh, the minimalist movement. Minimalist means very little on a piece of canvas or anything in your home or whatever. And then she's also uh, known for pop art and performance art. So she would go out there and put on her like fancy clothes or, you know, from Japan. And she would go around New York cities and it was called then performance art. Or she would paint on people's bodies and, and, and things like that. She did pretty insane, crazy things, but very famous. She lives in a mental institution, like I told you, since 1977. She has treatment for mental health problems. She's 91 years of age and she paints and has a regular schedule. And she says, by translating hallucinations and fear of hallucinations 
in paintings, I have been trying to cure my disease. So see, she was, she was feeling very sick because she has all these ideas in her head and there are people or places or polka dots or whatever that come into her head and it troubles her. And to get rid of the trouble, she paints. And she says, I've been trying to kill myself of this disease that I have in my head by painting. That's a powerful statement by this artist. I think I have so much respect for this woman. Let's move on. Okay, so we're gonna look at some of her paintings. Infinity Mess is known for that. And I'll show you in, on this canvas how they did it, how she did it. Um, Infinity Mirror Room, we'll just take a look at that. Polka dots, she took a simple thing like a polka dot and made it famous. And then happenings, like I told you, she would wear uh, outfits and go out and paint people's bodies and things like that. And some of her pumpkins, okay? So let's look at, this is an infinity net painting. So what did she do? I tried this. I thought, at first when I looked at the painting, I thought, what is such a big deal about this painting? You know, until, and then I took this course on Coursera, which I'm going to reference in my next lecture. And um, in that, he showed me, this gentleman showed me how to paint uh, like Yayoi Kusama or some other famous painters. <clears throat> uh, and uh, the course is uh, delivered through MoMA. So what, they, what she did was she would paint the background a, a plain color. And then all this was done in oil. But unfortunately, you guys, because of your age, I didn't put oil in it, okay? So, but with this oil paint, you can take thick blobs of oil paint and paint little circles, which became a little different. And then, and she did it for hours on end. Sometimes people say she did it for days without sleeping even. She would just, and it's a very meditative process. But the act of making these little marks on this canvas is so different that it comes up with um, a very interesting painting, really interesting. So anyway, so um, this is an infinity net painting. You know, when at first when you look at it, you'll be like, what, what is this? But when you do it, you understand that for a person who has mental disease and she's just occupying herself, like it's an obsessive, compulsive nature of hers, she would do this very meditative and relaxing okay that's one that's the infinity net paintings it looks like a net and then here is the infinity mirror room look at that and that's yayo kusama when she was young okay so she had a room of mirrors installed and then she stuffed these things with uh, with uh, polka dots and they looked like little tentacles like little octopus and then put it all in a room and Look, it goes from here to infinity and beyond, right? Because of the mirrors, the reflection goes from just this area. So if you look at it, it's just this area that she has all this stuff. But because of the mirror, you see Kusama, she's there all the way there and there and there and there. So that's your infinity mirror room. So this was an installation. It's called an installation. So she would... Uh, artists can do this where you can go into gardens or rooms and install something for a little bit. And that's art. Like you can even go out and create something in your yard and put something pretty like some fabric or scarves and make it just beautiful and take pictures. That's installation art, okay? And uh, installation art doesn't live for a long time. But you, the, the photographs of the art live for a long time. Here, look at Kusama with her gorgeous red hair. I mean, that is just stunning. And look at the polka dots. She's What's put her? Polka, uh, this is her hair. And this is an older Kusama and she's sitting, but look at how she's done it. It looks like the room goes on forever. She just painted everything in polka dots, including her dress. That was insane, I think. But she's not, and here, happening. Look at how she's dressed up, right? And she's going out 
And this is one of the happenings, pictures in New York City. This is Kusama at the age of 90. Don't you think she's absolutely wonderfully cool? Look at, she has her polka dots on her dress, her gorgeous red hair, gorgeous <laughs> lipstick, and she's very like intently watching, you know, and um, amazing expression on her face. So that's Kusama for you. I just love her, she's 90 years old. And there are these quotes by Kusama. It says, she says, I think I'll be able to, in the end, rise above the clouds and climb the stairs to heaven and I will look down on my beautiful life. Isn't that wonderful? With so much mental health problems and issues, she still thinks that she has done well. and She knows it, that she's done well. And she says, when I go to heaven, she's gonna look down on her beautiful life and say, and be happy up there, okay? And then she says, my life is a dot lost amongst thousands of other dots. There's a big meaning to this because all of our lives, like everybody who's on, on, uh, um, on this particular lesson with me, all of us are little dots. You know, we are here on the earth to create something, to do something, to live a good life. And we are one dot amongst thousands of other dots, right? And polka dots can't stay alone. Look at the polka dots she put on pumpkins, right? And, they, and she put thousands of them on pumpkins. And um, I think I'm getting some background noise, so I'm going to mute you all. Okay, so um, uh, anyway, so polka dots can, cannot stay alone. Remember she said we are all little dots, right? I mean, she didn't say that we are little dots, but I'm saying that we're all little dots and we can't stay alone. We need people and we need to form like a community. If that's at least that's what my take is of what, whatever she's trying to say. And then she said, with just one polka dot, nothing can be achieved. With just one little activity, not a lot can be achieved, is what my interpretation is, okay? Every time I have had a problem, I have confronted it with the acts of art. That's powerful. My art originates from hallucinations only I can see. So see, art can, you know, your ideas about art can be even from bad experiences, like in the case of Kusama. And then she says, forget yourself. Just forget yourself in the things that you're doing and do the things with real passion. That's what I take from this, um, from her quote. Now let's look at my next famous painter. His name is Gerhard Richter. I came upon he, his, uh, him not too long ago. I didn't know about him before, but I really enjoyed once I found him online, I really enjoyed his paintings and the way he painted and the way he paints, okay? He was born in Dresden uh, in 1932. He's 88 years of age and he still finds time to paint. He was highly gifted as a child, but notoriously bad in school. So you see, some of the kids might not like school. It's okay. But then you might like something else that is wonderful. So do that something else, but stay in school, finish your school, just the elementary school, like, you know, the up until 12th grade, and then work on your passions, even while you're in school, because sometimes don't make that as an excuse, like just because all these famous people said that they dropped out of school or they didn't like school or they did crazy things, doesn't mean US children should do those things, but you know, stay in school, Find your passion, work on your passion, and then move on, okay? He was drafted into the German army, you know, and, uh, during the Second World War. He did not like Hitler. And then finally, in 1961, they defected from West Germany into Dusseldorf, uh, he, he, uh, into uh, East Germany. And then he went to study at the Dusseldorf Art Academy. Okay. Next. What is his painting style? He experimented a lot during art school. 
the Dusseldorf Art Academy. In 1964, he came up with the technique called the blurring technique. So what he would do is he would paint detailed paintings, then he would take his brush and it, he would blur it all. He would just blur it all. That was his blurring technique. And by the 1970s, he was developing abstraction in his paintings, okay? Uh, then he drew color charts. I'll show you, it looks like a color chart. Then he did some paintings like that were very realistic. Then he overpainted on photographs. He would take photographs and then he would paint on the photographs. And then towards the end, he started doing just plain old abstract art. And he has a very curious technique, okay? So let's look at some pieces. This is a very, uh, he did this after 9-11. He was supposed to fly into Canada. I don't know if he got there, I forget that. It doesn't come to my memory. But he painted the Twin Towers and they were burning. But then he blurred it all. This is one of his blurring techniques. He just painted it and then he blurred it off. Look, but you can tell it's the Twin Towers. He was very moved by this uh, incident. All of us were. These are the color charts. He painted this 1,024 colors. And look at the precision with which he painted the color charts. It's unbelievable. And look at one of his absolutely realistic things. It looks like a photograph. And that's uh, Betty. That is Gerhard Richter's daughter, and she's just looking away. But look at this. I mean, it is just, it's like a photograph. If nobody told me that it was a painting, I'd say, yep, nice picture. Where is she looking? Nice photograph, right? But it's so precise, so precise down to the hair that's, yeah, that's like moving out of sync from her head. Right here, there's like whisks, whispers of hair right there. And it's just, you know, um, and the jacket, look at that. Incredible painting. And then here you go, look at another piece. It's a photo realistic painting. It's candle by Richter, okay? So he's just drawn a simple old candle. It's lit up and by golly, it's just gorgeous. It's a beautiful painting, okay? And then he does his abstracts. This painting sold for millions of dollars, 46 million to be precise. Abstract the guild, build. This is uh, the painting. But look at uh, this painting, it's very abstract. But they say that when they studied the, with x-rays underneath the painting, they would come up with some very elaborately drawn things. And then on top of that, he would layer paint and then take it off. He would layer it and scrub it off. He would use a squeegee, he would use a brush, he would use all kinds of things on this canvas and the poor canvas would undergo a lot of work on it before he would say, he would look at the canvas and say, okay, painting's done. Until then he would keep working on it, but then he would put it in a place in the gallery and he'd look at it for months. For months, he would look at these paintings. And then when he thought he was satisfied that he did not want to do any more, he would then move it for sale. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Now here, look at what he's doing. He's painting this painting right here, and he's using a squeegee. So he, as he works standing up, he's always upright. Sometimes his squeegees are as big as this canvas. And you can tell he's a tall man, but look at how tall the canvas is. And he would just have these canvases prepped, hung, and then he would go to town painting these canvases. So that's Gerhard Richter right there. Okay, let me see. Do you guys have any questions so far? Anybody? Um, Let's see who all are here. Joe is here, Dolly's here, Will is here, Saroj is here, Jareth is here, Jesse is here. 
Everybody else has signed in, but I don't see their pretty faces. That's okay. So I'm going to mute you again, and we'll go to um, the uh, next artist that I like so much. I just, I used to love these artists, this, this guy. Oh, before we go to the next artist, quotes by Richter. He says, my paintings are wiser than I am. And art is the highest form of hope. This is such a profound statement because I to totally believe that all of humanity, we should really appreciate art and artists and support them. This is one of the prime reasons that I'm doing this class because I want to educate very young people about artists from past to present. And I'll continue to do this. I'll keep recording uh, all the other artists that I'm uh, going to bring forth so that children, when they become adults, they won't forget that artists depend on people to buy their art because artists cannot do good work unless they can make a living, right? It's a lot of work, as you can see. When you do art, you can see that it's a ton of work. So you have to pay them for that work, right? And so those artists need mentors, and those mentors are people like us, and we have to support the artists so we can buy their art and they can then create more art. And this point is so, phenomenal to me and I was so inspired like when I went to um, Spain um, let me grab some coffee here hold on hold on before going to Spain when I was here I used to love this architect his name is um, he created falling water gosh um, Fr Frank Lloyd Wright Frank Lloyd Wright. He was my famous architect of all time, okay? And because he just did stupendous type of um, ar uh, architecture. But then I went to Spain and I saw Gaudi's work. Gaudi was an old man. Someday I'm gonna do a, a lecture like this about Gaudi. I mean, you've seen Gaudi's work in pictures and photographs. Like, you know, when you read, you see it, but you're not as moved by it. When you actually go and see the person's work, I was literally moved to tears. It is so beautiful. And he could do all that work because he had a mentor. Okay. Let's move on. And then he says, I believe that art has a kind of rightness, as in music, when we hear whether or not a note is false. And then he says, to talk about painting is not only difficult, but perhaps pointless. You can only express in words what words are capable of expressing, what language can communicate. Painting has nothing to do with that. Very powerful. Let's look at Dale Chihuly. He's another person that I absolutely uh, enjoy. So Dale Chihuly, he says that I want people to be overwhelmed with light and color in the same, in some way that they've never experienced. This is one of his statements. And uh, drawing was second nature to Dale, and I didn't know that. I thought he was a glass artist. And whatever he draws is his thoughts and stuff. He would put it on paper first, and then he would create these unbelievable uh, creations and blown glass that I'm going to show you, a few of them, not all. I mean, I could do a whole lecture on just Dale Chihuly. And even the other artists, Yayo Kusama, as well as Richter. But I just wanted to introduce you all to the living artists that I admire. And uh, uh, Chihuly does stuff in mixed media, graphite, acrylic, watercolor. Uh, and he even uses wine, tea, and coffee on his paintings. See? Okay, so look at his inspiration. This is his drawing right here. This is Chihuly. And then he created a chandelier like that. 
Isn't that cool? So what did he do? He would take a squeegee bottle, put paint in it, and then he would draw, you know, this inspiration sort of like a, in a Pollock style uh, painting, but he would create something and then he would go to his glass studio and get his apprentices to help him create these big pieces of art. <clears throat> One thing about Dale Chihuly is that if he created a piece of art and I, God bless him, his pieces are very expensive. I would love to own a piece of his, but I can't afford it because they're so expensive. So supposing he created a piece and it's not so good, he won't put it on sale or anything. He will just take it and crush it. That's how he was. He's very particular about his pieces. Here's another art of his, because this is an art class. I wanted to show you Chihuly's art. He made Ikebana. Ikebana is a very minimalistic arrangement of flowers uh, and it uh, originated in Japan. So he said, okay, I'm gonna make this. And then, he, and then he made these Ikebana pieces in glass. Okay? What is wrong with this computer? And um, if you ever go to Las Vegas, uh, when um, Bellagio, um, gave him an installation and their entrance hallway is full of these glass, hand-blown glass pieces. And by the way, Chipoli was here um, not too long ago uh, in Dayton. His exhibition um, happened maybe about 15 years ago or so. And I took my kids there. I think my son was very little, uh, five years of age. And then we went to England. And he recognized a chandelier in one of the places in London. He said, Mom, that's a Tivoli. So what I'm saying is art is so powerful that even a child can understand art because it makes an impression on you. A thing of beauty, if, you, if it somehow uh, you know, touches your heart, you'll never forget, regardless of your age. Here's Chipuli, he's drawing the Ikebana. Look at that little famous little squeegee bottle with paint in it, it's acrylic most likely. And he lost an eye. See, there's a little um, eye covering. He lost an eye in a glass blowing accident. Glass blowing is not for everybody. I tried it, I'm too short, but I'm still going to do some glass blowing if I can get my hands on it. I'm too short because the glass blowing furnaces are a little tall and when you, when you blow glass inside on this hot iron rod, you have to take all these safety precautions and then everything is so heavy. So, you know, but and look at these pieces. These are gigantic pieces, you know, and to, to get them to do their thing, look at how brilliant the colors are, just brilliant colors. And this is just a sprinkling of the art that he did. Just a sprinkling. There's so much more that Achihuli has done. He has done floating sculptures for gardens of museums and absolutely gorgeous, like, you know, and big pieces. He's, he's very well known. I just admire this man. Let's look at the quote by Chihuly. He says, I never met a color I didn't like. And then he says, Color is one of the greatest properties of glass and is more intense in glass than any other material. I would tend to agree. I want people to be overwhelmed with light and color in a way that they've never experienced. I started my talk with this particular quote. And most of the drawings are quite spontaneous. He doesn't think too much. He doesn't have any preconceived ideas. He just goes to town and he draws. Sometimes he draws on snow. Sometimes he just draws on, I don't know, road roadsides or whatever. And he would just draw it. Very spontaneous for him. And then he can, he says, I can't understand it when people say they don't like a particular color. How on earth can you not like a particular color? You know, that is uh, that is interesting to me. Um, like. Uh, I know for a fact that 
there are certain colors I don't like. Maybe there are people that I, you know, since I've started my study on color and um, what it does to people, I know that a lot of people don't like certain colors. So that's, that's that. So if you wanna, so these are all contemporary artists. If you wanna paint like a contemporary artist, use your imagination and never stop creating. Never stop learning. Ask questions. With time, patience, and practice, your creations will become masterpieces. Give the world something unique. Don't, I mean, don't copy, steal. Steal, but don't copy. Steal ideas, ideas. That's what Picasso said, right? You steal like an artist because you sometimes you can't come up with something. You always get you will always be inspired by something. All right. And if you do this, you they will talk about you forever, like we are talking about all these artists. Uh, I want you to go to this particular uh, reference. What is contemporary art to learn about what is contemporary art? And the painting in the background is daisies by me. This is this is uh, figures that I drew as a child, and so I said I'm going to draw this, and I I think I'm going to use it like these will be my polka dots, my daisies. Okay, so I'm going to draw multiple multiple daisies. So let's look at um, this uh, canvas and see what we can do. Uh, uh, see if we can combine a technique of all three of them, okay? So we'll look at Kusam, uh, Kusama, we'll look at Gerhard Richter, and then we will also do something like Chihuly. So uh, let's go ahead and start uh, something on this canvas, but combine, make a painting, with the techniques of all three artists, okay? So let's see, um, I'm going to draw in here with a oil pastel, some polka dots, okay? So here we are drawing polka dots. Okay, and I'm going to color it in. You can fill up like uh, Kusama did. She would do a ton of polka dots. She would just make polka dots all over, okay? So I did some polka dots. I'm going to combine all three to make something very unique, right? This is what, so we're going to see what the other techniques are. So she did some polka dots, all right? So they are colored in. Let's color them in. Let's color it in. And then she did some infinity net, right? So what I'm going to do is, because I don't have oil paint, I'm going to take uh, another color and just draw. So she would draw, like when she started her infinity net paintings, this canvas would be painted a certain color. Like you can paint it in acrylic. But, and then she would take a paintbrush and do this. She would create these marks. Okay, you can't see it because it's blue on blue. But I'm just going to give you, so she would make some little rounds, round, round marks inside these paintings. I'll try to do it with a, um, with paint. Let's do that. I'm gonna watch the time. Yeah, we have time. So let's do that. 
it. So now I'm going to take some acrylic paint and paint a, a side of it. Okay, let's see what what that. So this is Kusama's side, so I'm going to just draw some a painting right from the tube, from the tube, put it on the canvas, and then I'm going to take a brush and just spread it up. This is a dagger brush now. I need a bigger brush. Hold on. So let's see, I got a bigger brush because I want to work fast. So a big brush, and then I'm going to spread the paint, spread it, spread the paint, okay? What do you think? Should I give this much to Kusama? Let's do that. We'll give her this much space, right? Let's do that. So let me put more paint because the paint is not, okay, there you go. More paint for Kusama. There you go. Let's paint that in. So Kusama would paint the background a solid color, okay? So there we have it. And now what we are going to do is we are going to paint like Gerhard Richter. Let's continue it. So Gerhard Richter would draw like a very fancy underpainting. I don't know, let's draw a fancy underpainting. So it would be very detailed, I don't know. He would draw mountains or valleys or whatever. Just imagine he drew a, an underpin. And we're going to give him this much space, okay? So here the underpainting, I'm going, now he's going to do this. It's a very strange technique that he does. So let's put, just because I want to have continuity. So he paints, he just puts a lot of paint So 
we are just dabbing paint. Woo! Made a mess. Let me clean it up. Okay. And then, let's see. What color do you think I should use in here? Anybody? Let me unmute you. Let's unmute all of you and uh, tell me what color would you like to see? Yellow. Okay, you got it. Purple. Purple, I put purple on already. Anything Pink. else? Pink. Pink, okay. Red and white makes pink, so let me add the white. Interesting. No. Yeah. Oops, you were about afraid. You were about afraid. Aren't they using some yellow? Okay, so then what did he do? He would take a squeegee. You didn't have a squeegee in your chair. And then she says, You do have a squeegee in your chair. You do have a palette knife. Okay, I'm going to use this palette knife as a squeegee. And look, this is what he did. He just would take a squeegee and squeeze it. See, look at that art, man. Whoa. Oh, See, this was, this is a very curious technique, right? So here you have it. If the colors are mixing, and he would do all kinds of motions with his squeegee. And then sometimes he would take a brush. Oh. Wait, you're supposed to paint around the polka dot? Yes. more. Then he would layer it up. See? He would then layer it up. He would add more color whenever he thought he needed color. And then he would just there was not layer it up. Onions. No, all oh, there's not onions. Lots of onions onions. And he left like little uh, spots. He would sometimes use his brush and do crazy shapes, maybe. I don't know. We don't know his exact style, but there is a movie that was made, and you know, um, he he just used to use a squeegee. We don't have a squeegee, but we are using the palette brush as a squeegee and just do that. You know. Probably do something like this and so forth. Okay. Oh. I'm actually quite surprisingly for me now opening the purple for the first time. You are. That is awesome. That's my favorite color. Is that right? Very good. So yeah. So that is. Okay. Gerhard Richter. You know what? I'm using green. Oh, that is actually very dark. Oh, I like some. Uh, 
I'm gonna do this. Do you do you like this? Why is everything leaking? Let me use my squeegee. I know someone. This is real. Who? I do. No, I actually don't. Your so, what are you doing? Am I exactly? It's mine. Crap. Oops. You don't Maya, you need to be quiet. Thanks. But Maya, you can be quiet. What do you do? You don't be quiet. You get loud. What? When we do finish one of our series, we should play this. Touch my mom. <gasps> I actually don't know what Milo sounds like, so I'm not sure. Maybe that was a prank. Well, I don't really know what Milo sounds like either. I haven't talked to him in like. Okay. Now let's see what Chihuly did. Chihuly would take his paint on a little squeegee. I don't have a squeegee. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use whatever paints I have on my paintbrush. And I'm going to make a little. So all I did was I washed my brush off. Whatever, with whatever paint I had on my brush in a little bit of water. And I washed my colored lines off as well, like so, so that everything is nice and clean. And whatever paint I have used, I'm going to take that. I have that a little bit more. I mean, I'm seeing that a little purple color has come about. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm going to move this into my sink for a second. And because this is purple, I'm going to add purple into um, this paint. I don't know if she's there yet, or maybe she is. Well, all I can tell you make is it a little thick. Okay. Oh. And I'm going to have fun with this. Okay. So, what do you think I should make? What do you think I should make at this bottom portion? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put some dots. I don't know. I want to create a piece of ground. Maybe I want to do something like this. I'm a gardener, so I'm going to draw a sculpture for the garden. Okay, I don't want to mess my floor here. Going all over the place. So, because this paint is not as thick, so I'm going to lay it flat and work on it, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sculpture of the garden. So, instead of using the. And you're like, what I want to do. Are you muted? No. Paint is very thin. So instead of using thin paint, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, this paint on as a background. This little background. I can't show it to you right now because the paint is dripping. But all I'm doing is I'm going to take that paint and put it in the background.
go. What I did was, because the paint was so runny, I painted the background purple. Can you see it? It's completely purple. And the paint is dripping. So I'm going to lay it flat again. But see, look at how cool the, even though the paint is dripping, it's making a very cool mark, which is, I'm going to accept it. I'm going to live with it. You know, sometimes accidents make some really cool marks. And um, some artists have made a living off of their mistakes, you know, and they've come up with some nice, see, look at that. So I'm going to let it rest. I like, I like that it has made those marks. So I'm going to let it rest like this. And I'm going to paint on it um, over here. Okay, right here. And I'm just going to make like a garden sculpture with it. So I'm just going to drip paint. That's what he said. He could just drip paint. And then he would say, okay, let's go blow glass. going to um, clean my brush because I don't want anything my brushes to get spoiled so I will put it in water and then I will close the paint caps and I'm going to take a tube like I'm going to pretend that this is a nice thick paint in a little squeegee bottle so I'm going to squeeze this paint off onto my flat canvas and I'll make some marks with it and that's going to be my sculpture later on. So let's see. I'm going to There you go. I like it. And then I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to squeeze some yellow in it too. And then I'm going to take a picture and send it over to you. And I want to put a little bit of green onto my painting. So I'm going to take the tube again, the tube of green, and I'm going to draw. Oh, it's a brand new tube. So I'm going to open it. And it's now it's. There, I think I'm done. Okay, so that was that. 
Now for Kusama's um, painting, I wanted to show you the marks that she does with the infinity net, right? So let me show you the marks she did for her infinity net painting. I would use a brush like this around, and then uh, that was a blue, so I'm gonna make it an opposite color, so maybe a red or a yellow. Which one do you want to use, red or yellow against a blue background? Anybody? Yellow. Yellow, okay. All right, I'm going to use yellow. Isn't our yellow also almost? I'm going to take the yellow and show you what I did. Yes, because I, I don't want to um, mess this painting up. Oops, see, it's dripping. Oh, no, it's dripping. I can't do that. I don't want to spoil my floor. So what I'm going to do, what I did with that drip is that I caught it and then I just sprinkled it like that on the painting. A lot of painters do that. Okay. So with this, I would just take a little bit of yellow and make a mark, which I'm going to show you on a little piece of paper, right? Or, or this canvas that I used up. Like this canvas. So imagine this was the background, right? Let me bring it closer. Imagine this was the background and I painted it all. What you could do is take very thick paint and do this. Continue to do this part. Let me see, is that closer? So you see, she can make these marks. And she will continue to do it all over the canvas. But all the time she would take extra paint and put it in. This is a poor example, but I'm going to do this particular technique on the blue canvas Okay. All right. So that, that's it for the day. You guys have fun. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Any questions? No? Let me just go and uh, I was going to put my brush in my coffee. So, Hyson, um, you have used all the um, uh, watercolors or tube? I used acrylic. Everything was acrylic. Acrylic. From the tube. Yeah. Okay. Give me one second. I will uh, wash my hands. Okay, so uh, I just wanted to say thank you for joining me and I will see you bright and early on Monday morning. I'm actually going to New York on Wednesday now, not on Sunday as I planned originally. Okay, thank and you. Enjoy your trip. I will, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your thank time. You. Yeah. Enjoy your trip. Welcome. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you. Take care. You Thank too. You. Drive carefully, Hassan. I will. I will. Actually, I'm going to go on uh, Wednesday. So um, I'll be here for the two classes. Oh, you'll be here two days. Okay. Yeah. So that's. I don't know what uh, this um, abstract painting becomes. Let me see. Like, I, I can't make any sense out of it. Oh, it's good. Keep developing it, remember? It's okay. So what you do, I see a lot of, uh, like, that's good. I mean, just keep developing with layers. So what, huh? yeah, put, put more polka dots in it. Or put, okay. like, you know, like, cover the whole area with different types of colors. You know uh -huh. the people's techniques. 
So you may want to uh, add up like maybe you did all the dots everywhere or you did those little marks that I showed you, the little U marks for the infinity net painting. You'll probably unify everything with that, you know? So, uh, and then it'll look like a unified painting. The composition will come together. But if you see, when you first add, a, what do you call it, a layer of painting, it doesn't become a painting. Then you keep working on it, add layers and layers and layers. And then it'll look like something, something pleasant to you. If it is pleasant to you, it'll be pleasant to other people. So keep working on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it may not, it may look like nothing right now, but if you keep working on it, it will. It doesn't look like anything. <laughs> I know, I know, but hang in there and put layers in it. How are you doing, Saroj? Uh, I can't hear you. Okay, hold on. I think, did I, uh, your video is muted. Let me unmute you all. Uh, uh, hasn't we show me your today's painting? Today's painting? Yeah, show me. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I can't say anything about you. You are so... <laughs> You are so talented. Talented yeah. about talent. I don't. I can't say anything. <laughs> I, am yeah, not, uh, I will take a picture and send it to your uh, email. Yeah. But it's yeah, still please. Developing. So you see, please we'll, send. we'll look at all the paint that I got. Yeah. On my hands. So right. you watch it. So give me a minute. मेरे ख्याल में हमको छोड़ना चाहिए बंद हो गया लगता है हां मुझे भी लगता है चलिए बंद नहीं right. किया अभी अभी बंद right. नहीं किया ओके एनीथिंग एल्स अह एबिगेल हाउ इज इट हाउ इज इट कमिंग एबिगेल हाय डॉली यू हैव अ क्वेश्चन व्हाट्स द क्वेश्चन हम यस्टरडे वर वी पेंटिंग लाइक हम लाइक एनीथिंग और लाइक वी वर पेंटिंग लाइक वी वर पेंटिंग इट व्हाट डिड वी डू यस्टरडे सम फ्लावर्स मेबी what did, what did we do yesterday? I forget. I'll have to check my uh, uh, thing, but I forget. I just get very uh, easily. Like blo means uh, flower type. Uh, the, uh, the sunflowers, right? We did we do sunflowers? Not just Q4 uh, petals are there. and. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were just doing... Uh, so what we were painting is anything that our heart desires, whatever, but we were using a lot of color. So I painted daisies. Mm -hmm. I remember now. Thank you. So I painted daisies, but I am going, you know, you have to put in a lot of color because we were studying Matisse yesterday, right? So we yeah. were trying to uh, figure out how Matisse thought and he did primitive shapes, primitive shapes, not like, you know, a face that looks like a face. He just did very primitive shapes and that's what we were trying to do. So I said, okay, I'm going to draw daisies and I just drew daisies because that was from my childhood. I used to paint those. I used to draw those daisies. I still draw the daisies. So the, it's very primitive art. So that's what I was trying to, uh, to do yesterday. Okay? Thank all you, right. Lady. Thank you all Thank very, you. very much. Thank it was lovely. Have a nice weekend, everyone. Yeah. Yes, have a very nice weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.